salutations! My name is Ollie, and here's your loaf of daily bread. Today's loaf comes to us from Jiddu Krishnamurti, and he says, Meditation is to be aware of every thought and every feeling. Never to say it is right or wrong, but just to watch it and move with it. The challenge of any mystic or prophet or spiritual teacher is always this to convey these types of ideas in a simple and straightforward manner. This is incredibly difficult, as you can tell, because after reading a very short passage like this, I could talk for 20 minutes. Just goes to show that when you're dealing with psychology or spirituality or philosophy, it's extremely easy to be verbose and to say more than is necessary. So whenever you get one of these simple, straightforward type definitions like the one I just shared with you from Krishnamurti or for instance, another one I shared with you a while back about how mindfulness is simply being aware of what you're doing as you're doing it. I believe that was Deepa Ma. Those types of definitions are really, really valuable because they strip away all the nice teas and all the, you know, unnecessary metaphysical talk and they get right down to it. So again, meditation, according to Krishnamurti, is merely the act of observing your thoughts, not judging them, not saying that this thought is right or wrong. And it also includes, of course, your feelings. So according to Krishnamurti, meditation is merely the act of observing your thoughts and feelings without judgment, never to say that they're right or wrong, simply to observe and to flow with them. Now, of course, this is incredibly difficult. It's not something that you can do by simply deciding to. But nevertheless, it can be stripped down to that basic notion. To simply observe what is going on inside you without assigning values to it. The reason it's hard is because, as I've said in the past, we are constantly being swept up by thoughts and emotions. And so this Detachment requires distance. It requires space. There's a part of you that is capable of observing things in a neutral and detached manner, but unfortunately that part of you is small and weak and atrophied. Like a limb that's been in a cast for months, it's feeble from not doing anything, from being locked up in a tomb or There are many different metaphors that I could use here, but essentially the point is this. That part of you is small and weak. And the practice of meditation is how you allow that part of yourself to become stronger and larger and more dominant. I say dominant sounds kind of aggressive, but that's really what it means. Because there are all these different aspects of you and they are vying for dominance. And the part of you that is able to observe without judgment is in there somewhere, but unfortunately it is not dominant yet. So having a meditation practice where you sit and try to observe your thoughts and to just let them come and go is a way to awaken and strengthen that part of you which is capable of observing without judgment. So again, simple explanation, simple practice, but Simplicity doesn't mean ease. (laughs) It means the steps are basic. There's not a lot involved. It is still extremely difficult to do. So if you don't already have a practice of some sort, if you're not already naturally introspective and accustomed to being inside your own head and watching what goes on in there, then I highly recommend that you start. The longer you wait, the longer you miss out on this inner peace, this feeling of contentment with the way things are. And I'm telling you, in my experience, that is happiness. There's nothing else. If you're expecting a sustained, permanent pleasure rush, it's not gonna happen, my friends. Your biology, your chemistry won't allow it. It's unsustainable. For every pleasure high, there must be a low of suffering. These are the peaks and valleys of the neurochemistry 
that we are beholden to. Because you know, emotions are chemistry. They are neurotransmitter, which are being released into your bloodstream and causing physiological reactions. And so whenever you have a positive reaction like pleasure, there's always a letdown. So instead of chasing pleasure highs, why not start meditating and practicing mindfulness and becoming aware of what's actually happening internally? And in this way, you may be able to attain something which is better than a pleasure high. This feeling of tranquility that the Stoics talk about. All right, my friends. Hopefully that was insightful for you. Hopefully it gave you something to chew on. My name is Ollie, and I will see you next time.